Hey everybody, it's Mark here, your one take beer reviewer, the guy at bureaunut.com, doing a little special thing because, um, first of all, I my old flip phone is about to be bricked because it's only got a 3G. Uh, signal so I had to spring finally for uh, what I'm getting is an Android phone a Motorola that um, has another movie camera to it so I'm just testing out shooting a, a little movie here and another one take beer review and this is going to be a special because I have been sent something a little different to uh, talk about and I'm just going to do this as a series because it's not going to be a, a five minute thing this is uh, a kit I've kind of been hoping to get homebrew kits to try out, and uh, maybe someday I'll get one of those giant uh, all-in-one electric brewing uh, tons, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, this is from Brew Firm, which has been making uh, homebrewing kits with Belgian styles, and uh, this is a box called Brew Your Own Belgian Beer, and well, we'll just take the box out and do a little unboxing video, as it were. And I may cut here just so we don't have me struggling with this box for while you watch. So, this is the whole kit. I have not had a look into it. So, uh, we it claims it uh, offers 10 styles of beer, uh, of craft beer, using highest quality ingredients, yada, yada, yada. Add sugar and water and follow the instructions. So, let's see what uh, comes with this then. So a nice little box uh, here, and then big flaps as a list of the uh, other Belgian flavors available. So what we get out of here is our little fermentation bucket, uh, which has a hole for your spigot. So uh, that's all. It looks like an all-in-one thing, and hoping I can open this without uh, breaking a seal that shouldn't have been broken or something like that. Um, Ah, here we go. That just dropped another bit of instruction to uh, remind us to share our reviews. Some bubble wrap. And here's the nuts and bolts. Uh, first off, uh, well, let's get everything else out of the way. Uh, a little siphon uh, for, for bottle filling bottles if you choose to. Here's the instruction bottling compass, a, uh, a for measuring your uh, your gravity. That's all very nice. And then here's the spigot, the instructions, even a coaster, little temperature gauge. Well, this is pretty uh, pretty fancily set up here. And then uh, yeah, a couple of coasters, and then uh, some. Here's your sugar tablets, I believe. And I'm not going to rip this open right now until it gets time to. Uh, use this stuff and then finally here is our uh, malt um, so brew strong buck riders sacred saison belgian saison so yeah i mean uh, these are some this is a style that uh, ferments well in uh, warm weather so uh, it's probably a pretty goof proof way to start this so uh, when we get a chance and i've read over the instructions so i know what the heck i'm doing i'm going to shoot another episode and we will put them all together to make a little video hopefully in time for a christmas uh, gift giving and i'll try to have some information at the end how to come across some of these hey it's me again i just went and opened this package because uh it's got some interesting stuff to it now this has the yeast under the cap so i'm just going to leave this here but it has the instructions first of all that says uh basically you're just going to warm your water enough to dissolve uh the sugar that you're adding to it and i'm thinking if i still have some dried yeast i mean some dried malt extract i might try that on it as well and but it's a pretty good uh, complete package comes with uh, some sanitizer and cleaner cleanser a uh, package of, uh, as I said, bottling sugar to uh, add to your fermentation, an airlock. So it's pretty much all the stuff you might not have if you were starting this. And of course, uh, some coasters and uh, a stick-on uh, thermometer. 
the labels for when you bottle your beer and it does not have bottling caps i think you can use probably uh well we'll see what we've got but i've got bottling caps so i'll be good and then a um, hydr hydrometer which uh is just has like four numbers and it will just tell you if it if the beer is at a certain number then you can bottle with it so it's a little easy to use and then the spigot that will go on this so it is a uh surprisingly pretty good uh thorough setup with uh anything that you might need but not have so I will be looking forward uh, to trying this out. Here we are in the kitchen getting ready to set up and uh, do the brew firm thing. And I've set up uh, some of my equipment from previous uh, home brewing extravaganzas, mainly a large uh, measuring uh, cup, as it were. And uh, a, uh, here we go, a big stirring spoon. So we're going to start by uh, sanitizing stuff. This came with a uh, OxyClean type uh, super wash, and it says on here one half to one ounce per half gallon of water. But uh, luckily the instructions say teaspoon per couple of cups of water. So we're going to do that and get back to you. Okay, the stuff suds us up, suds us up a lot, so we're going to just pour it in here. I have already attached the uh, brewing spigot uh, to the fermenting bucket and uh, attached the uh, thermometer. And here, so we're just going to pour this in here with my measuring spoon. Anything that we think is going to come into contact with the beer, we want to give a good uh, wash, rinse, and so forth. And we're just going to soap up the sides of this. Okay, so I'll be rinsing this out in just a few minutes. In the meantime, uh, let's see if I can get... Yeah, we can see here, I've got a uh, couple quarts going of uh, water that's warming up to about 120. That's going to help uh, soften up the, uh, the can of uh, malt and for the of, of malt extract. And then I've got one of my trusty old brew pots here. I'm just going to do a gallon in here so I can help bring the water temperature of the uh, fermenting water up quickly. But now it's going to be time to uh, rinse this out and give it a good rinse because there was a lot of... Uh, brewery wash in there that I'm going to have to make sure doesn't uh, stick around. All right, well, I've taken the lid off this thing and just trying to give you a little look at uh, this malt extract before I pour it all out. It's very dark and it smells nice and malty, just like the uh, old, regular old homebrew uh, malt extracts. And I know these are talking about being no boil kits. I'm a little leery of that just from my years as a home brewer in years past. So some of this I'm raising the temperature a little bit, trying to do a few extra precautions, but I am glad they are doing a lot of Belgian recipes with this uh, uh, Buck Rider series of uh, home brew kits. Uh, this is the uh, Super Saison, and you know most Belgian styles are pretty forgiving of uh, high temperatures, maybe even a little bacteria. It just kind of goes into the flavor profile. So we're going to put this in the pot, turn off the heat because it's at 120, and just let it warm up a while. It's been 15 minutes. Let's see if we can pick up our can of malt extract. And it pours in pretty nice and thick there. Reach over for our spoon, inconveniently placed out of the way. And now they say to uh, put some of, some more warm water into the uh, into this can to help get more of the extract out. That one had the sanitizer, some of the sanitizer in it, so we're just going to go with the uh, stuff I had almost to a boil here. And let's stir it up. It's still pretty thick in here. It's going to take a while to get this to fully dissolve. Okay, so yeah, I got that water very hot here, but I've got two liters of it now in this that I'm going to mix my sugar in, and one liter in here mixed up with the uh, malt extract, so we're moving right along. Uh, they have a handy chart, which is pretty different for each of the styles they offer here. Luckily, the uh, Saison is the one that makes the most 12-ounce uh, bottles, it says here. And uh, so we're going to go now with two and a half cups of sugar dissolved into here. This is from Aldi. Actually, pure cane sugar, uh, evaporated cane juice. It's still basically sugar. So we're going to now put two and a half cups of that into our 
sugar bucket and we'll be stirring that to get it good and dissolved. And I've been measuring this all out. This water and sugar is uh, two liters. We have one liter in there already. And we got to get this up to 11 liters. And uh, they say you, you know, they recommend filtered water. You can use your own tap water. I'm going to go with some uh, purified uh, baby water from the store, which well, let's, let's see what it looks like. We now just need to measure in the last half liter. So I had to use my measuring cup again. So it's got a nice, it's nice and foamy. And uh, it's also at about 86 degrees. And we got to get that down to 72. Normally, I, if I had, if I was using my steel bucket, I would just kind of ice bath it or uh, have a wort cooler that I could use, just run cold water through some pipes in there. But we're just going to have to cover this and let it sit for a little while until it gets down to the proper pitching temperature. Because if it's too warm, you're going to kill your yeast. Well, I'm going to suggest this to you if you're making it indoors and you want to get your temperature down a little more quickly, just uh, take it outside, especially in this weather. So keep an eye on it while it's sitting out there. We want to get it around 72, 68 degrees. Right now it's still at like, uh, well, now it's getting down to the 80, so this shouldn't be too long. Okay, well, as this photo shows, we are pretty much at pitching temperature. One thing I would mention about the... Uh, the malt kits that they send with this. This is already pre-hopped with this. If you wanted to play around with it some more, you could do some dry hopping after the first fermentation. We'll try to stick to this a little more closely to the recipe, but right now it's time to shake up the yeast. I already have an airlock fitted to the top of the fermenter. and kind of sprinkle it around, distribute it along the top. And yes, a lot of brewers who use dry yeast will just sprinkle on the top. If they don't want to make a, you can make a starter if you like to make sure it's uh, at the right pitching temperature like you were doing pizza dough. And from here, we snap on the lid. There we go. And to fill the airlock, usually water is good enough. Some brewers who worry about water getting sucked into this as the air pressure changes will put a little liquor in it instead. So we'll just put a little bit of that in. There we go. One thing I'm going to do that's not part of the regular kit is I'm going to take a regular hydrometer meeting. It's not necessary. I think what they send you will set you up enough, but uh, this will help uh, set this up a little bit better. So we just want to put in enough to get this to uh, float. Shake off the bubbles here. That's about a 1059. Uh, we'll, we'll let it settle here, and then that'll give us a better idea of what kind of alcohol content we'll be looking for. So we are going to uh, set this in the basement at room temperature. That thermometer came out of the cellar over here, so it's a little chiller than needs be. So it's right about 72 now. So we're just going to come back when we see some activity in the airlock and uh, come back in about one or two, one a week or 10 days to uh, start the next phase, which is to bottle it. Uh, this took all, all of uh, two hours from setup to put away. It took me actually longer because I wanted to heat my water. And so it took a while to get it back down to a pitching temperature. So that is how the uh, brew firm a uh, Buckrider Belgian style beer maker works, and we shall see the result in a couple days.